Hello learners, as I had mentioned in the previous class, today we will look at some of the families that are found in their periodic table and their unique aspects that make them in those various groups. The first group are what we refer to as the alkali metals. They consist of lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and fromium. The group 1 metals do not include hydrogen and they have got the following characteristics. They are shiny, they are malleable, and they are ductile. They are softer than all the other metals and they are good conductors of heat and electricity. Most reactive, they are the most reactive of all other metals and they have got a valence of one electron so that for a chemical reaction to, be, to occur, they must give up or lose one of their electrons. And I take you back to whenever, when we were talking about ionic compound. One of the examples was the case of sodium chloride. We said sodium must lose one of its electrons and give it to chloride so that it can form sodium chloride. Being one of the alkali metals, it has got a valence of one and it is, one, they are, it is one of the categories of the most reactive elements in the periodic table. These are the group 1 metals, what I am calling as lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francesium. The second group, which is group 2, are the alkaline earth metals. They include of beryllium, magnesium, <coughs> calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. The group 2 metals, they are just like the first group of metals. They are ductile, malleable, and shiny. They are very reactive, but not as much as compared to group 1 metals we have discussed above. They have got a valence of two electrons, meaning that they, for a chemical reaction to occur, they must give up their two electrons. So that they can form a chemical compound. Here are the, the, the alkaline earth metals, they are labeled in purple. Then from the alkaline, alkaline earth metals and the alkaline earth metals, we go to what we call as the transition metals. They are found in group 3 to group 12. Just like the group 1 and group 2 metals, the transition metals are shiny, they are malleable, and they are ductile. Often they form colorful compounds and they have got they often have a variable number of valences of electrons. Remember they are in group 3 to group 12, meaning that in each one of these groups there is a specific number of electrons they must lose so that a chemical reaction can occur. For instance, iron, which we had discussed in our previous classes, has got a valence of two or three. For a chemical reaction to occur, they can lose either two electrons or three electrons. They include, these transition metals include lanthanides and actinides. I would not like us to dwell into the characteristics of the lanthanides and the actinides as they are not up to this level. However, these are the various characteristic, characteristics of transition metals. And these that are labeled in green are the various transition metals. The ones that are in green are what we call as the transition metals in total, while these ones that are here are the lanthanides and the down ones are the actinides. The other group of elements in the periodic table I would like us to look at are the group 7 elements, commonly known as the halogens. They include fluoride, chloride, bromium, iodide. Yeah, and they are they are seventeen. They are group seven metals, and they are very reactive. They are non-metals. Sorry, they are called halogens, and they include fluoride, chloride, bromium, and iodide. They are very reactive, and they have got a valence electron of seven and they are found in group 17. Halogens only take one electron from metals to form an ionic compound called a salt. 
And I take you back to the case of sodium chloride. Chloride is one of the examples of halogens. For it to react with sodium, it has to take one electron, one electron from the sodium to form sodium chloride, which is commonly what we call as salt. All these other elements of group, group of all these other elements of group 17 can also form salts when mixed when they react with metals to form ionic compounds, which we are commonly referring to as salts. The salts have got distinctive colors. For instance, in the case of this group 17, chlorine is the most chemically reactive of all those elements. And this is what we have labeled here in orange. They include chlorine, chloride, bromine, and iodine. The last group I would like us to look at are the group 18 non-metal elements, which we refer to as the noble gases. They exist in isolated form. That is, they cannot react to form compounds because they do not have a valence. They have got eight electrons. They have got eight electrons in their outermost shell, and therefore they cannot react. They neither lose nor gain and are considered to be very stable. They produce distinct glows when electricity is passed through them. All of them, please note all the group eight, group 18 elements, that is the helium, the neon, the argon, the tronium, the xenon, are found, they are found, they exist in gaseous forms. They are these we can see here labeled in purple. They include helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, random, and, and this last one here. All these are what we what collectively forms the periodic table, the alkaline metals, the alkaline earth metals, the transition metals. The others are also the other remaining parts are non metals and what we commonly have reacting in the form of molecules, the carbon, the nitrogen, the oxygen, the sulfur, the phosphorus, the selenium. While the group 17 is what we have referred to as the halogens. And the last group, which is group 18, are the noble gases, which we say they are very stable and they cannot react. They neither lose nor gain electrons and they cannot exist in molecular forms or compounds. Thank you.